Okay, we need a, <clears throat> a different background color for the end of day trade. How you doing, friends? This is zero days to expiration, <clears throat> the final hour trade. And for the final hour, <clears throat> we'll choose um, red. No, we'll choose green. We love the color green. All right. So I uh, I did a recounting or an, an accounting of what we have done since doing the final hour trade since I started. This will be the twenty seventh episode. Okay. So is this the twenty seventh? No, I have to go back and check. Is this the twenty seventh? Oh my god. Let's see, just, just to make sure. Twenty eighth. Yes. Sorry. This is the twenty eighth episode. So we've done twenty eight of these trades. Uh, we have actually entered into twenty trades. So that means that seven trades we did not. Um, I'm sorry. Hold on. We have entered in 21 trades. We have profited on 17 of them. So out of, um, you know, 21 trades, we have profited 17. So that means that 17 divided by 21 is an 81% win rate. Now I had to go back because I've always was just doing this off the top of my head, but I went and I checked each and every one. So we've won 17 out of 21. Um, and that means that uh, six of the trades, six of the trades were no trades. Now, it just so happens that uh, four of those six happened last week. And then the other one happened, another one happened yesterday. So five of the six trades that were no trades happened within the last week, which is really remarkable. Uh, there was one other that happened uh, a few weeks ago. All right. So out of those 17 trades, uh, five of them, we had uh, pinned trades. Those That means that we had extraordinary profits on those. We came within a few percentage points of the price expiring almost right on the middle of the, um, uh, the butterfly. And so those trades profited anywhere from 350 to 800%. All the other trades, we made profits anywhere from 75% to 200%. So those are the stats so far. And that's what we're going with. So that's, that's our baseline. We're 17 out of 21 with six no trades. I have no idea what's going to happen this afternoon. We could, you know, hit it wildly good, or it could be another no trade. It could be a flop. Nobody knows. What I do know is that trading this final hour is really gearing up to be a fantastic strategy. Now, we've done all the work prior to coming to this trade. So a lot of what you see, you don't see any of the background work that we've done. Um, although I give a, a pretty good indication of where what we're going to trade, why we're trading it, and so forth. And uh, if you would like to uh, participate in these trades within the group and learn more about the strategy, go to zero-dte.com slash try for a four-week trial. Uh, you'll learn all about our strategy, our methods, using volume profile and order flow and everything else that we do in order to ascertain market um, direction, market bias. You'll learn about options how to sell options, how to create asymmetric trades. You'll, you're going to learn a lot. Plus, you will also learn our continuous, Im continuous improvement process. So there's a, a real lot to learn. And uh, so anyways, getting back to the trade. What we're trying to do is we're trying to put on an asymmetric trade. We tr generally trade um, symmetrical butterflies. We try to put them out of the money in a, in a location that is determined by our um, reading of the market structure based on the volume profile and the current energies in the market. Now, 
let's take a look at uh, where the market is and where the market structure is and um, what we might want to do. Now, just so you know, earlier today, we talked about another strategy called the Batman strategy. And that's a more esoteric strategy that we don't really trade that often. But um, there was this particular setup that happened today that, um, that you, you might want to use it. And basically, the Batman trade is for a range-bound trade where you're trading sideways within a certain range. And uh, you put um, a trade at the top of the range when, it's at, when price is at the bottom of the range. And then place another trade when price goes to the top of the range, you place another trade at the bottom of the range. And then you play the two off of each other. And it's called the Batman trade because the two butterflies standing next to each other look like Batman's ears. Yay. Cool trade. Um, we didn't, New visitor. We didn't find a real good opportunity to get into it <laughs> today. And that, that's kind of like a hallmark of a lot of the things that we're doing these days. That, um, you know, getting into the trade sometimes uh, can be a challenge, you know, because... We're very particular about uh, what we choose to do. And uh, so we have a lot of non-trades. Now, of course, I'm sure you've heard the expression that a um, no trade or no position is a position. It's a position where you're not taking any risk at all. Uh, and your strategy told you that, or at least led you to believe that there was no real good opportunity. And uh, that certainly happens. Um, that's happened a lot. And it even happens in our, our normal everyday trade that we take as well. It follows a lot of the same, uh, the same uh, constructs and process and strategy and methods and so forth. And, and that is because we are looking for asymmetry. We are looking to take tiny little risks for huge outsized profits. So we want to make sure that the trades that we put on have a fairly good chance of, uh, of making it in there, right? And But even if we don't, you know, the tiny risk that we're taking isn't going to break the bank. And our whole purpose of everything that we're doing is capital preservation and account growth. So we want to preserve what we have and grow the account. If we don't see like a good, you know, a good opportunity, well, that's fine. We'll just step aside. We have we have many of these opportunities every week. With the SPX, we have five zero DTE opportunities every week, you know, our normal trade, plus we have the afternoon trade. So I guess you have 10 opportunities. That's a lot of opportunities. And so there's really, and because of the kind of return that we can get on our, uh, our risk that we're taking, we choose to only take the very best. Right, so we can have really great returns over the long term, risk very little capital, and always feel completely comfortable with with everything that we're doing. Right, so that's the premise of everything that we do. Now, the um, the whole an, a, another area where the zero DTE trade excels is the fact that, well, like most day trading strategies, you're only looking at a very small sliver of time to predict price. But unlike most day trading strategies where they're trying to predict specific movement from one level to the another, then down and up and, and so forth, they only make money when, thing, when price moves from the point that they enter to the point that they get out. With our strategy, where the strategy, because it's a premium collection strategy and the profit curve extends way well beyond uh, the range in which we put our strategy on and because premium is decaying which means the profit curve is rising throughout that day it actually gives us a very um, flexible area from where we can profit a very wide area and in fact we don't even have to sometimes be close even close to the strategy that we put on or the strikes that we choose in order to profit just have to be near it so for all of these reasons, it, it really is, I think, like the perfect day trade. And, th and then the last final hour trade, we're squeezing it down to those final few minutes. Well, the last hour, 
So we've already seen what's happened during the day. We have a good idea of the market structure and where price looks like it's um, likely to go. And so we play that much more condensed area and we only have to predict where price is gonna be somewhere in that range. That's it. And then let the premium decay and uh, the expiration, all of that work in our favor. So that's where we're at. So let's take a look at uh, the chart. So um, in our trade earlier today, we were thinking that, okay, we might have a range bound trade somewhere in this range. Let me draw a, <clears throat> a rectangle. So we thought that we would trade somewhere in here, in which we are. Actually, we thought something like this. That was that was more our our thinking, and then price almost immediately just dropped through there. So that led us not to take the trade because normally what we would have done is if price had stopped right around here, then we would have put on a trade up here like this, All right? But because it dropped down here, it became a, a different story. It looked like we might enter this volume node T1 and thereby not make or invalidate the, um, the Batman trade because normally this is what we were expecting. It would come down to here and then we'd put on this trade. It would then like a nice range bound trade like it did the previous day, pop back up here. And then when it got into profit up here, we would put on another one of these butterflies. Uh, only this one, we would place it down here like that, All right? And both of them would have really good risk to reward and everything would be cool. I mean, um, risk to reward in the order of one part risk to eight to 10 parts reward. So that was, that was the strategy. And our, our strategy also was to keep the total risk between these two uh, very small. And if possible, if we made profit on the first one to help that finance the second one. So, um, you know, who knows? We could have come out with a free ride. So that that's the idea behind the Batman trade. And of course, that uh, that didn't really work, although it might have ended up working. Depends on what's going to happen because of this crazy action. But it didn't it didn't do what we thought it was going to do. It went beyond. So we didn't take that trade. And that's OK. That's perfectly OK. So now here we are with this pretty sharp move down and then what looks like it may it may end up retracing that entire amount now that might be a stretch i don't know if it's going to retrace that entire amount uh, this right here this red line is the poc for all of this trading over the past few days the past four or five days that means that price uh, has traded most right on this red line you can see, and that obviously has a lot of gravitas to it. So I, I'm suspecting that, you know, price may end up right around here, but it may also end up up here too, where there's a little bit more sort of these uh, sub highest, next highest nodes. And so I think that that's where we need to place the trade. I think it needs to be somewhere between the POC and up here. Uh, you know, if we're following through on this idea of being range bound and this whole idea of being range bound was after taking a look at the the um, the bear rallies that returning uh, visitor. I'm sorry, the bullish rallies that were happening um, off of the bear bear trend. Oh, what am I doing? I keep on hitting buttons. So we're taking a look at uh, these these bullish rallies that happen off of the bear trend or I, I, you should say bear trend rallies. And uh, they always seem to have some some kind of consolidation after the after the rally, which is exactly what's happening here. Uh, the problem is that you can't always predict just how, you know, how much of a consult, you know, what what is that going to be and what's it going to look like? Nothing actually always fits into your nice, t tidy little box. <laughs> which it obviously didn't do today. All right. Um, let's see if we can get some of the 
members to uh, to join me. Um, hold on. Please go to the YouTube chat. All right, so we'll get some people coming in here uh, to comment and give their ideas. So, yeah, it, uh, it looks like we're breaking out to uh, new highs, and it looks like we might break beyond this, um, this POC. So... I'm thinking that yes, we are going to have a trade up here. Probably, probably uh, centering a fly right around here at 41.55 is going to be the trade. Ah, there they are. <laughs> Short-term trend looks bullish. Thanks, Chris. All right, and then, uh, you know, Jeff is here, Mr. Rose is here, Mr. Forbes is here, yay! All right, they're all there. They're all sitting in the background just waiting for something to happen. Oh, Les is here. He filled out one at 41.40, 10 wide. So some people have already taken the um, the initiative here. So 41.40 at 10 wide, that's... Sounds pretty darn good. Let's let's check out to see what that um, that results in. So let's um, forty one forty ten wide. Let's go to SPX. So that would be a call. Let's make this guy forty one forty. And 10 wide, that'd be 41.50 and 41.30. That's a, um, well, we can't, oh, that's 40.40. Can't have that. There we go. Cost a dollar 65, a dollar 50, dollar, dollar 55, looks like. All right, let's see what that looks like in the grand scheme of things. We'll put that up. And um, so the cost of that is about $150, or it is $150 plus commission. The uh, potential trade 10 wide is $1,000 minus $150 or $850. So if we were to take, now we have standards on what kind of trade that we'll take and um, all right so uh, 850 divided by 150 equals 5.6 so generally that's that's within our our range we want something around a one to five or better risk to reward and uh, that's okay you know it's it's not bad and the cool thing about this is if it passes through it you know we can we can grab it on the way up even if it doesn't end up right in the middle here and give us a pin trade so that's a that's an okay trade oh everybody else is coming on we got taunts group uh, we've got greg we've got mike we've got hammond we've got aldo uh, what about open interest what about open interest open interest uh, we only see the open interest at the beginning of the day. And so we'll see open interest um, tomorrow. What we're really concerned about here is the volume on the specific options chain. And, um, and, and more importantly, we're more interested in the, uh, the rate of change of volume on the options chain. And we're actually working on some tools to give us a, a better look at that. So the reason why we're interested in the rate of change of volume on the options chain is that that gives us an idea of where the market 
is seeing price go. And so they're anticipating that price will go a certain place. And so volume will pick up on, uh, on those strikes that are, you know, are growing. And that is a clear indication of the intent of the market. Maybe not on any particular person, but the market as a whole. And so we might use that as our kind of weather vane. Uh, we don't have that tool in place yet. So right now we have to, we're sort of relying on just looking at the options chain. So when we look at the options chain, all right, so is this a option? Yeah, this is the June 1st. All right, and if we look uh, north uh, on the call side, we can see we have um, a lot of activity here at 4150. That uh, seems to be the uh, biggest attractor of volume, 4150. And on the put side, right here at 4100, I don't know, is there anything further up? That's about it, 41, well, maybe at uh, 4050, but that's way up there. I, I don't expect price to drop that low, and it looks like price is moving up. So 4150 seems to be the uh, the big kahuna this morning or this afternoon where price is heading to. So if you look at our chart, 4150 is right here. So it's halfway between that area that I had pointed out in here. Um, J, JB says that 4130 is a 77% uh, probability of touch. That's a very good point. So that's another way that we might um, judge where we might put something based on the probability of touch. So if we take a look at this trade here at, uh, let's say, 4130 is a 77% probability of touch. Let's take a look at what the probability of touch of each one of these strikes is. So the probability of touch extends down to, well, at 41.35 right now, it's 50%. That's about the limits of where we want to be, 50%. These are pretty tight. They're, um, it tightens up as you go further into the day. So if we had a, a long leg that was touching 41.35, so we do that with that 4140 at 4130. Uh, we might be able to go one more strike out to 4145 and then make this guy here 4160. So it's 15 wide. See how that looks. That's $1.50. So there's a good trade right there. All right, it's pretty expensive. Two dollars and sixty cents now. Of course, price has been going up as I was talking about it. It was further down. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we were down here, and now it's up here. So, two dollars for this trade. Two dollars, fifteen. Why? That's fifteen hundred dollars minus uh, two is thirteen hundred. So, two hundred to make thirteen hundred. That's certainly within our one to five ratio, right? That's actually one to almost one to seven. So, that's a good trade, and it's actually a little bit under uh, two dollars right now. Let's see, at um, one ninety five. So I wonder if I can get that trade on. Let's uh, see if I can get that on outside here. <clears throat> At uh, 145. So I don't trade the SPX in uh, TOS. I trade it in Fidelity. So I'm doing it off, off camera. So 
do, and it has a clunky interface. But that's what we're going to try for. We're going to try for the 145. And currently it's at uh, 225, so it's already making. See, I can't do this fast enough. With this clunky interface. So if I can get it at two dollars, I'll take it. So I've got the order in. New visitor. Ooh, dollar eighty. What happened there? For a moment there, it's, it dropped down to a dollar eighty. That was weird. So I'll put it down for two dollars. It's a fine, fine goal. Let's see if we pick it up. Stream says, any trades for zero TTE? Is he watching the same video? <laughs> um, yeah, so stream, yeah, we we're looking at uh, 4145, and I have it at 15 wide. I don't know if I'm going to get into it. I think I missed it by a few cents. Oh, you can't hear me sometimes because it's when I turn my face. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I could uh, position the, the mic like this so that it's right in front of my face. Either that or just turn up your volume. So, um... Jeff is in at 41.50, 10 wide on a small account, 80 cents. So it's only 3.30. We've got plenty of time here. Uh, did, I, um, did I get into the trade? I don't know. I have to check my thing. Uh, yes, it filled. My trade filled at $2.00. All right, so because price has uh, dropped a bit, we need price to go up. All right, let's show the, uh, the chart. So, uh, my trade is um, currently sitting at, this is my trade, I and mean, people have lots of other trades. It has a break-even at 41.32, 41.35, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40, 41.40
and 4158. All right, so let's draw a, a rectangle right around that area. Forty-one fifty-eight, forty-one thirty-two, and then ends at uh, sixteen hundred or four o'clock. We'll uh, we'll go down to a three-minute chart. So what we're hoping is that price will come up here, break into this volume well, and then move up into this area. Sure looked like it had some potential right here when we were doing this. We broke out to a new afternoon high, but now it looks like it's going down. We'll break it down to a one minute. Now, um, profitability is a different story. We don't necessarily have to get inside to be profitable. Right now, the break-even is sitting at about uh, 41.22. So that's the profitable area. So we only need to get inside there to be profitable. And then, of course, if we can get inside of the, uh, the fly, then we'll be extra profitable. We'll make a green inside of there. Jamie Goodall says 4065. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Is that gonna be is that your target for the end of day? That would uh, totally wipe out our trades. You might be right, though. Look at look at this. So you you know you look at um, the options chain. And uh, it's not well. I guess thirty-five thousand at forty-one hundred. That's uh, that's going to be a big attractor. And we've moved down closer to that, so it's uh, providing some gravitas. But the um, still, of course, this is showing the POC for just the latter half of the day. So we have uh, 24 minutes left in the day. 24 minutes to go up just about 10 points. So 
It'd be nice if we can get above these, this sort of level up here. I think it will break higher much quicker. Hasn't been since Friday that we've seen a really good win. And uh, all of last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, were no trades. We had a nice winner on Friday. And then yesterday, no trade. So we need to see some action here. Need to see some action to keep us interested in this game. <laughs> uh, so Jamie says, I'm riding my morning trade of 41.30, 15 wide. So you're right there. Wow. So Jamie is in profit right now from his morning trade. Um, and uh, with this trade right now, we're just right on the edge here. Come on. Get up and go. We need to light a firecracker under that ass. Let's go. See where our profitability, our profit curve right now is. So, uh, yeah, we're right now, we are touching profit. See, we're, according to this, we're in profit because the profit uh, curve is right at 41.22. Oh, just slipped out of it. <laughs> Giveth and then taketh away. See, now we're right here. See? I went to the other chart and it went down. So I'll stay with this chart. It's just taking a breather and saying, oh, I got to get another leg up. Come on, we're the big boys. Let's, uh, let's pump this thing up. Pump it up. All right, so Zach is asking, Hi, Ernie, I've been trying to log on to your VPA course. You sent an email with pitches. If you don't mind explaining how to access lessons, thank you. Oh, uh, how did you get the VPA course? You probably went to another site that I don't... Oh, I'll, I'll uh, contact you later, Zach. My VPA course now is part of... What he's talking about is the volume profile is um, part of the... Um, the tutorial here on uh, zero DTE and uh, I don't know how you found it but uh, it's kind of it's kind of like I don't even operate that site anymore but that's okay we'll get you set up you'd be better off just taking the, uh, the zero DTE course Time to appease the trading gods. What do we have to do? Yeah, I, I, I know. $39. That's what I used to sell it for for a long time, for years. And then I incorporated it into the zero DTE for free. Well, it's actually part of the cost of the trial. Um, I wasn't even aware that anybody went to that site anymore, to tell you the truth. But uh, I'll set you up. Don't worry about it. Come on. Needs to break above this high here. Like if we can get above that 4128, it looks like, it'll break right into that butterfly. That would be awesome. Wrong way. The other way. Hey, 
It's getting there. So right right now I've got about eighty dollars of profit. Sitting at well ninety dollars. I'm sitting at uh, two dollars and ninety cents is the value of my my position. But I really wanted to get up inside here. Wrong way, wrong way. So we have 17 minutes to go. Now see it's dropped out of profit. I'm taking the uh, the tack that hey, the less I say, the more it will go up. <laughs> uh. So we've got uh, sixteen minutes to go. Definitely the wrong way. It could just be, you know, getting ahead of steam. Who knows? But uh, I don't know. <clears throat> Gave up all that ground. Fourteen minutes to go. Oh, I don't know. It looks like it's losing some ground here. It was doing so well. We got some tweezers going on here. If we can get uh, a nice little bump up here, that would be nice. Come on. <clears throat> tweezers are where you have these two little tails, long tails right next to each other. Not that it makes much difference in a, um, a one-minute chart, but 
So you had them over here too, and then that ended up going up too. It's not a very technical uh, indicator, I don't think. <laughs> Thirteen minutes to go. I got to get my um, my watch on with the second hand. So JB wants to know, does this ideal um, probability of touch threshold of 55% apply to trades at any time of the day? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, it's just as true in the morning as it is in the last hour. Well, no, obvious. Well, yes, it does. <laughs> um, or are the expectations lower? The thing is, those odds will change, and then the position from which it uh, will give you that 50% probability of touch will change too, depending on how much time is left, et cetera, and where price is. Uh, William is um, very optimistic. It looks like it's coiling before breaking the level to go higher. I like that optimism. But we only have uh, 11 minutes to go here, so we got to get a move on. You would think that this uh, big recovery from the, the sharp move down and then this consolidation <clears throat> is setting us up for a, a final minute plunge. Uh, that's the way I like to look at it. Oh, what was that? So close. You started to really get a move on there. <clears throat> or was that just clearing the, the way? <laughs> There's a little bit of a battle going on here. Nine minutes to go. Nine minutes for the win. Come on. Let's do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, baby. It's teasing us. Well, let's hope that uh, William's right, that it's coiling like a snake ready to bite. new visitor but i think if it breaks down here into this volume well uh that's gonna be that's gonna spell toast for this move and i'm just afraid that it's just gonna go whoosh down <clears throat> it could go whoosh down and then whoosh up I've seen that happen plenty of times
Bring in that big volume now. Come on. You can do it. You know, maybe we'll come down to those uh, that those last. All right, so now we're down to seven minutes. It's giving it up. Ah, so depressing. <clears throat> We were $90 in profit. Should I have taken the profit right then? That would have been a 45% return. Three and a half minutes to go. It's not looking promising. It just gave it up right at the last minute. The final minutes. There it goes. It's going to die. Wither on the vine. Oh, we're going to go below 80% win rate. So that'll be um, 17 out of 22. What was that? Uh, It'll bring us down to a 77% win rate if it doesn't make a move here and it doesn't look like it's going to. It is losing it. <clears throat> Very depressing. Come on. Had our hopes up. We we're actually in profit. But anything can happen. We've got uh, four and a half minutes to go. New visitor. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> uh... Now, I, I think it's going to break down from here even further. Three and a half minutes to go. And it's breaking down further. Well, 4,100. <clears throat> One hundred does it doesn't really speak to anything. On the put side, uh, that's where the maximum is. So it uh, it went with the puts, and it uh, it left the calls in the dust. It's so now we only have two and a half, uh, two minutes and forty five seconds. That's it. It's it's done for, unless we have like a. Um, 
a nuclear bomb burst. Come on. Boom. <clears throat> it's way too far to go. Although in the past, I've seen with three minutes to go, it climbed 50 points. Doubt that's going to happen today. Today's not the day. Teased us right here. Just barely made it. All it had to do was break above here, and we would have been golden. Two minutes. You can see the volume climbing here in the volume bars, the volume profile. All this profit being taken at uh, 4,100. I guess that was what was important. One minute to go. Everyone's unloading. Thirty seconds. That's it. New visitor. Seventeen for twenty-two now. So uh, we're seventy-seven percent. The last couple of weeks have been really uh, disappointing. Alan saying uh, that the. Beer rally is done. Next stop, 3,500 after the elections in November. I'm sorry, you mean the beer? Oh, the beer rally. I see. The Yes, the beer rally is done. So that was it. That was the topping he's saying to the beer rally. I get it. So I, th I think you're right. Now, That could be very well be, and and that's uh, that's how I, I would look at it too. Let's take a look at the daily chart. Let me uh, set this up. So from the SPX point of view, so here are all the different. Um, <clears throat> beer market rallies that we've had uh, the very first one right off the very top the high in the all-time high in the S&P we came down hard bear rally consolidation moved down again came up fast with another bear rally consolidation came down not quite as far this was a little bit of a misnomer people thought that with the and this was a fed moment too People thought with the lower low or the higher lows that uh, that was it. That was the end of the downturn. And we came up hard, but then we came down equally as hard. A small rally here that, uh, that got sold off. And then we hit this low that dipped into bear market territory right there. Right there. And then 
last week we rallied. We rallied hard right into Friday. And uh, we had no trades. We had no trades here, 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 here. But then on Friday, we did really well. Uh, Monday, there was no trade, and today was just a loser. Incoming cool. chat. There was no trade right there. All right, so uh, Alan's saying that that's it. We're, we're heading down now. And I, I generally agree with that. I don't know, though, if, if we've spent enough time here or not. Do we need another couple of days, or is that enough? I mean, both of these, these are inside days to this... Uh, this big green bar here. Yeah, that looks pretty bearish to me. Well, this is, you know, this is a, uh, a bit of wisdom. The obvious in the market never happens. Of course not. It never does. And uh, less, um, be careful, as long as all the t talking heads are forecasting a bottom, they're talking, they are talking heads, but they might represent the public opinion. But see, the public opinion doesn't mean squat. Uh, they're saying whatever will get them eyeballs on their talking head network. All right. So now we're... Um, we're 17 out of 22. And that's um, 77%. So 77% win rate, five pin trades, six no trades. And uh, we go forward. We'll be here tomorrow to do the same thing over and uh, give it another shot. We're doing this experiment uh, with this final hour trade for the next... Oh, I, I would like to get at least 50 trades in before we have enough information that we can decide whether or not this is a viable strategy uh, to add to the mix, you know. Um, so we have, you know, multiple strategies that are all around the same concept, but uh, we would love to add this in. It seems like it has a lot of promise. So 50 trades done in the public, right out in the open, and uh, and then we'll decide whether or not to bring it in. I, I would say that the answer is yes, but still I want to do the 50 trades and have that data uh, to back us up. So there you go. There is zero days to expiration if you would like to try out the service. <laughs> Everyone calls me like, you know, when I'm on online. <laughs> If you'd like to try out the service, go to zero-dte.com slash try, four-week trial. At the end of that four weeks, if you join the service, I'll rebate the cost of that trial, and uh, we'll all have a great time. Thank you very much for showing up here. Peace to you all, and we'll uh, see you tomorrow. <laughs>